Hey friends, it's Just The Gems. I'm Brandon. Like I mentioned in my last video, uh, links in the description, I was the luckiest boy in school and I got to attend PAX West last weekend where I was whisked away to a secret location by Square Enix in order to play some of their upcoming heavy hitters. Yesterday was Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D and today it's Fantasian Neo Dimension. Now, how many of you are familiar with Fantasian? Show of hands. If you have an iPhone, you might be, because Fantasian has been an iOS exclusive. Now, you might be thinking, a JRPG? On a phone? A cellular telephone? How is that possible? Well, I'm not a scientist, but I can tell you this. Locking a game from the creator of Final Fantasy, Hironobu Sakaguchi, onto a cell phone platform is an act for which there can be no forgiveness. No, I'm just kidding, it's fine. But even more fine is the fact that now, finally, Sakaguchi-san is partnering with Square Enix to bring Fantasian to consoles. And as you might have guessed, I was able to take it for a spin. So, let's talk about it. What do you think? Fantasian Neo Dimension is the console version of Fantasian, and it comes with some new features that I'm personally really happy for. Well, at least one. The game was previously unvoiced, but Square Enix have added English and Japanese voiceovers. They also threw in a new difficulty option, but if I had to guess, that's probably there to make the game harder, which means it's probably not for me, because I'm bad at video games. All that, plus the ability to play it easily on an HDTV means that I will finally finally get a chance to experience the story. Because, I'll admit, I did try to play this on my iPhone. I did. I even did AirPlay or whatever to connect it to my TV so I could simulate the experience of actually playing on the big screen. But it just, it just didn't click. I need a controller. I need those quality of life features. <sighs> Maybe I'm a big baby, but phone games, even phone games by the father of Final Fantasy, just aren't going to be for me. Speaking of the story, Fantasian is about Leo, an amnesiac hero who's forced to get to the bottom of some sort of mechanical plague that's destroying his world. I know I could delve significantly more into the plot if I wanted to, because after all, the game this release is based on came out in 2021. But since I've kept myself unspoiled until now, I'm going to keep it that way. And so you all get to be unspoiled too. The aesthetics of this game are some of the most unusual and or the most talked about in recent memory. To get the obvious out of the way up front, yes, this game features a soundtrack by famed Final Fantasy composer Nobuo Uematsu. New Uematsu music in this day and age is more than reason enough to get excited for a game in my opinion, so I'm really looking forward to experiencing his work in this. The visuals are also really striking. Apparently, the developers handcrafted more than 150 dioramas and then filmed them for inclusion in the game. Like, they're not 3D models, they're actual real-life scenes created by hand. It's such a creative and cool approach to world design, and I can't wait to see every setting the game has to offer. One thing that did put me off a bit during the demo was related to these dioramas, though. When you move from place to place, the camera will frequently like zoom or spin around to give you a new angle on things. While I'm pretty sure I could get used to it, it was admittedly kind of disorienting whenever it would happen. My hope is that either A, I will get used to it quickly, or B, there's some sort of option to change or limit how those transitions occur. There are some interesting innovations in the combat system here that are worth talking about. We're looking at more or less traditional turn-based combat, but with a few new wrinkles that, to my knowledge, haven't really been seen before. First up is the idea of skill trajectories. This allows you to attack enemies either in a straight line or in a line that you curve.
It seems like this will open up a lot of potential strategies in more complicated combat situations because you suddenly have the potential to take out a ton of enemies at one time. Curve the bullet, you know what I mean? And speaking of taking out a ton of enemies, the game's dimension system is another innovation slash oddity to add to Fantasian's playbook. See, with this, you're able to sort of capture battles with enemies and random encounters and stow them away in some sort of dimensional dungeon. Oh, dimension. Okay, I get it now. This allows you to stock up multiple enemies and when you're ready, head on in and fight them all at once. This gives you some degree of control over how frequently you face random battles, though of course you will have to deal with all those bad guys eventually. Within a dimension battle, these things called gimmicks will appear on the battlefield and grabbing them will give you enhanced attack, better defense, and things like that. It sounds like an interesting strategy for dealing with the age-old concept of random encounters, so I'm curious to see how it plays out across the length of the entire game. So I can say from first-hand experience that the battle system is pretty darn innovative and fun. I think the game's roots as a mobile phone game still sort of show from time to time though. Some elements of the UI don't seem fully optimized for consoles. I mean. It all works perfectly fine with a controller, and I'm honestly not even sure if touch controls are an option on the Switch. I played my demo on the PS5, but still, it feels slightly less polished because of it. Well, that and the fact that the character and enemy models aren't super impressive, even for 2021. But these are quibbles at most, and they honestly don't really dampen my excitement to finally get my hands on this full game. Fantasian Neo Dimension has a lot of good things going for it. Its pedigree is top-notch, its combat is innovative, and its visual design is striking in a lot of ways. If the story can meet or exceed the bar set by all the rest of the features I got to see, then I think we'll be in for another Sakaguchi classic when this finally hits consoles this winter. Anyway, that's all for now. If you wouldn't mind, would you consider subscribing if you like what I do around here? And if you'd like the video, I would really appreciate that too. So, with that, until next time. Bye.